Okay, let's say I've been studying chromatic harmony and then I'm given this figured bass exercise for practice. I'm in a standard chorale texture in the key of C-sharp minor in a 3-4 meter and I'm given this bass line C-sharp, F-sharp, G-sharp, C-sharp scale degree 1, 4, 5, 1. C-sharp minor, let's see Do, Re, Me, Fa, Sol, Le, Sol, Fa, Me, Re, Do, Ti, Do, so here's Do, Fa, Sol, Do, something like that. So I look at my figured bass. At the beginning and the end, I just have the bass note with no figures, so of course that's a simple triad on C sharp. That will be my one chord, my tonic triad. Then here, above the G-sharp, above scale degree 5, I have a sharp sign for my figure, so that means sharp 3, of course. So that's G-sharp and B-sharp and D-sharp. It's my dominant triad. That sharp third scale degree, that B-sharp, is the leading tone, so I want to be careful with that. But here is the, here's the most interesting part of this figured bass. I have an F sharp and above that a sixth that has a natural sign in front of it. So from F sharp, from any F up, up a sixth is some kind of D, and from F sharp up a sixth in my key signature I would expect D sharp, but I'm asked to give a D natural. That means above F sharp I'm going to have D, and I'm also going to have uh, a third above the F sharp, which is some kind of A in this key signature, just an A natural. So I have F sharp and D and A. That is a simple major triad, D, F sharp, A. The root of that triad is D natural. In the key of C sharp minor, D natural it's not my usual second scale degree. That's a, that's a lowered second scale degree. It's exactly a minor second above tonic. If tonic is C sharp, the root of this chord, D natural, would be the lowered second scale degree, and that's often called the Neapolitan chord. So I have here a tonic triad, Neapolitan six chord, dominant, and tonic. Now, as I work out my, my part writing here, rather than starting uh, as I might have with simpler exercises, just starting at the beginning with any good voicing, I am going straight to the area that might cause difficulty, this Neapolitan sixth chord. As we've learned, the simplest, most straightforward voicing for this is to put that lowered uh, supertonic, that low two, in the melody, to put that on top, and to use close voicing if at all possible. Well, let's see if that's possible. Uh, the lowered sixth scale degree, I could put it here, that's going to push my soprano rather low, or I could put it up here, which is going to bring the voices rather high. These chromatic chords are generally very dramatic moments. They have a lot of uh, a lot of structural tension, which is to say they have a lot of emotional kick. And so we often find them at really exciting moments in the music. And so I think it's going to be fine for me to put the voices really high here. Now, I said I need D, F sharp, and A. D natural, F sharp is in the bass, and A. To do this in close voicing, dropping down from the soprano, the next note that's possible is an A, so that's what the alto gets. The tenor needs this F sharp. That's within the standard range for the tenor voice. Um, now, double check this. Which of these are tendency tones? A note that's been chromatically altered is a tendency tone. It's lowered so it wants to pull down. But there's another tendency tone here. F sharp, that's just do, re, me, fa. Fa is not a tendency tone that needs resolution. It's not an active tone. But this A natural, what is this A natural in the key of C sharp minor? That is scale degree 6, 
and we're in a minor key, it is low six. It is a minor sixth above tonic, just a half step above the dominant note. And that half step tension, do re me fa sol le sol, that, that lowered sixth scale degree wants to pull down. So keep that in mind. All right. In this chord, the dominant chord, we need to remember to raise the third scale degree to give us a leading tone. One of the most common mistakes working in a minor key is to forget that leading tone. Well, where do we put it? It may look a little strange on paper, but the standard voicing for this is to put the, to, to move from the lowered second scale degree down to the leading tone. We'll put a B sharp right here in the soprano. Notice this interval from a D down to a B is a third, but D natural down to B sharp is a diminished third. The rule is in a melodic line or in, in any line we want to avoid augmented and diminished leaps, but we've seen a few specific uh, exceptions to that, and this is one very specific exception. This is the standard voice leading for the Neapolitan sixth chord. Low two goes in the upper voice, in the top voice, and if it moves straight to a dominant chord, we go from low two to the leading tone, diminished third there. Notice that low two is just a minor second above tonic. Tonic is C sharp. We have this D natural, so I have do, fa, sol, to. I have do, ra, ti, do. So I'm going to be a half step above ra, and then ti, and then resolve that leading tone because it's in an outer voice. Gives me do here. That interval of a diminished third is the standard voice leading to go from Neapolitan sixth chord to dominant chord. All that's left here is to fill in the inner voices. What's the closest note to this A? Ah, we said the A is a tendency tone, so it's going to G sharp. That is in my chord. That's the root of the chord, and doubling the root will be perfectly fine here. Um, the tenor voice that had the F sharp that's going to move to this D sharp. Now, as I move from dominant to tonic, root motion by fifth. Ah, root motion by fifth, I look for a common tone, and the other voices move by step. Which one of these notes is shared by both of these chords? Not the leading tone, not re, but the G sharp. Well, in the bass, it needs to move, but it's also here in the alto. So I keep the common tone here. And this voice needs to move by step to the appropriate note. It could move either to C sharp or E. If it moves to C sharp, we have C sharp, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp. We have a chord with no third. So our standard practice for these choral exercises, we want a complete triad if possible. We certainly want the root and the third present. So let's have the tenor move from D sharp to E. Now we're going to back up to the first chord and see how smoothly we can get into the Neapolitan sixth chord. Smoothest voice leading to get to that D natural is going to be to precede that by the tonic, the root of this tonic triad. Smoothest voice leading to that A is going to be this G sharp. And the, the note that's missing here, the E, is only a second away from that F sharp. And so we end up with this voice leading. After you complete a voice leading exercise, double check. Double check that you have the correct notes in each chord. C sharp, E sharp, G sharp, doubling the root. Neapolitan sixth chord, double the bass. It's the only stable note. The fourth scale degree, F sharp, F sharp. That's doubled. And I have the, the D natural and the A natural. Five chord, I have root and fifth. The leading tone appears exactly once. And I've doubled the root. And here I have root, third, fifth, root. Good doubling. As for voice leading, up by second is fine. Down that diminished third is the unusual, but the standard voice leading for this. Sometimes it's filled in with a passing tone on the tonic. And then stepping back to the C sharp. The alto voice, motion by step. Tenor voice, up a step, down a third, up a step. These look like good lines. The bass line was given, one, four, five, one. Very standard. Now I check for 
uh, the relative motion between the voices. Fourth goes to fourth, to third, to fourth, that's fine in the women's voices. Soprano and, and tenor have a C sharp and an E sharp, that's a sixth. D and F sharp, sixth. Sixth goes to sixth again, C sharp, E, sixth again. Parallel sixths throughout. And comparing the outer voices, I have octave, F sharp up to D natural, I have a sixth, so octave to sixth. And then G sharp and B sharp, I have a third, moving to octave. So those are all fine. We get to this octave by contrary motion, and the upper voice moves by step. Uh, by the way, just to, to be uh, complete here in my, my basic harmonic analysis, my representation of this motion, uh, if this is the end of a phrase, this would be uh, with the melody arriving on tonic, bass note going from 5 to 1, that of course would be a perfect authentic cadence. Let's continue comparing the relative motion between the voices. Let's look at the, uh, the alto and the motion against it. We've already compared alto and soprano, so we compare alto and tenor. We're fine. We have third, third, fourth, third. Please compare the alto to the bass. I have a fifth. I want to be careful. Here I have F sharp up to A, a third. Strictly speaking, a compound third, a tenth and then G sharp up to G sharp octave. Oh, how did I get to this octave? Stepping down, stepping up, that's perfectly fine. And now I have oblique motion, which is always fine. This, this keeps the common tone. So let's uh, say the alto is fine with all the other voices. We've not yet compared the tenor to the bass. We've compared tenor to the voices above it. We'll compare tenor and bass. We have tenth, if I'm reading this right, tenth, octave, fifth, tenth. Getting into the fifth, we moved by contrary motion, so uh, no complaints at all about that. Beautiful voice leading, and there is my completed exercise involving the Neapolitan sixth chord, this chord that is built on the note that's just a minor second above my tonic. All right, so here's tonic, C sharp minor, and here is what we have. <laughs> 